Income Tax 2021-2022 Tax Software Example W-2 Income. Get ready to get refunds to the max. Diving into Income Tax 2021-2022. Here we are in the Lacert Tax Software. You don't need access to Lacert Tax Software or any tax software to follow along, but you might want to have the Form 1040, which you can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov, the software making it a bit easier for us to enter the data, jump on over to the 1040, running different scenarios as we do. Our starting point, the filer single, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210. We're focusing here on line one, that being the wages line, as we consider the data input related to a W-2 type of situation. So the W-2 form, you'll recall, will look something like this. So we've got the W-2. It's fairly straightforward up top where we've got the data input boxes. Most software will then make the data input very easy because they'll basically follow the boxes line by line, although they can get a little bit more complex when you get items down here and say box 12, for example, which might have different lettering on the right hand side. So you want to be able to understand one, the data input so that you could do the data input as easily as possible. But two, what, what do these different boxes kind of mean so that you could double check your data input, see if the software is doing what you expect it to do, and so that you could explain this information, say, to a client if they're having questions about it. If you don't understand a particular box or something, then you go to the instructions for the W-2, which can generally help out. So let's go on over to our, our this is my mock W-2, which, which is in Excel, obviously, and it's going to mirror some of the items in box one through like 12 here, we'll, we'll show some examples. So the first one's just a very basic example. I'm not giving all the data for the employer data, the employee data, I'm just basically focusing in on the boxes for the data input here. Also note that you might have some software that you could do that's kind of automatically input the software and it'll, it'll pull it into the system. The more automated things get, that saves a lot of data input time, that's great, but it doesn't it often makes people not even less and less aware of what is happening so they can't fix problems because they just put the soft the stuff into the software and the software is supposed to just do it so that becomes it becomes more and more valuable you'll be more and more valuable if you can actually ex explain what these different boxes are doing and what kind of problems are often going to be resulting as you try to put this information in in whatever data input format you're using so that you could problem solve anything that's going on and explain what is happening to the client which the client often wants to ha have some assurance that their data input person knows what is going on so <laughs> we're going to go to the first tab i'm just going to call it a generic job one notice you do need like the other information on down below to to put the the address and so forth but i'm going to focus just on the the data input for the numbers so we've got the spouse or the spouse now notice if it's married filing joint you could have some instances where it would be relevant or you need to basically apply if it's the which spouse uh, income you have there so that so if you have different limits in terms of like uh, how much you could put into like a retirement plan or an IRA or something like that, that could be applicable. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The retirement plan is going to be indicated on one of the boxes over here in our data input as well. So we got the retirement plan. I'll uncheck it now so we, we don't have a retirement plan at this point. That's going to be important because not only for the data input of these boxes that you're putting in place here, but the last thing that you'll often go over is whether or not they can put money into, say, an IRA account, an individual retirement account or plan or something. And uh, that'll be dependent upon whether they have access to some degree, at least we'll talk more about that later, whether they have access to a retirement plan in their W-2. So that's going to be an important thing to, to, to check off. So I said 40000 here. Notice that the system will then automatically put 40000 into the Social Security, or at least LACERT will, because it's going to assume it's going to be the same unless there's something else that will take place. Usually it's going to be the same. And one thing that it could also see just automatically is if you go over the cap, the, the cap on Social Security, it'll cap it at whatever the cap will be. Medicare wages also is going to default to the same here. Now the federal, so then you've got the withholdings. The federal withholdings, you're gonna have to do the data input because that's gonna be that, that complex withholding that you can't just have a flat tax on. So we're just gonna assume it was $4,000. That's the main one that's gonna show up on the actual form 
of the Form 1040, and that's the one we're most concerned with often when we're just doing W-2 type of income. Social Security calculating automatically, that should tie out to what's on our form. So here it is on the form, uh, 2480. Notice I didn't put that in here because the system should be able to know it by saying it's gonna be 40,000 times the 0.062, and there's the employee portion of the Social Security. So notice it's a flat tax, easy to calculate, and so there we have it. 40,000 and then the Medicare also in essence a flat tax easy to calculate unlike the federal income tax So here it is on our form the software already guessed and guessed correctly what it should be because it's going to be the 40,000 times 0.0145 It's going to be that that 580 those are the two that basically we don't really think about as much because they're not federal income taxes, but they're kind of double check numbers now notice you also need some of this data input to populate uh, in order to process the return as well, but I'm just gonna focus on the numbers here, pulling that over to the form 1040. There's our 40,000 up top in line one. And then we've got the standard deduction that I'm gonna assume is being taken. So that's gonna give us our 27,450. I can double check that in my tax account, uh, the software or my formula by saying I'm basically taking the 40,000 up top I can see that on the W-2, pull that over to the first page, that's 4,000, not 40,000, 40,000. Pull that on over to the first page. We've got the standard deduction, which I'm gonna say is equal to a single filer, 12,550. And so now I've got the taxable income, 27,450, 27,450, tying out to here. I'm gonna rely on the software to calculate the tax on page two, which is gonna be 3098. So 3098, the actual tax, 309, 3098. So there we have that. And then we also have the payments that were included as well. So the payments I can get from my W-2. So for the federal income taxes, that would be the 4,000 right here. So if I went to my, my formula, I could say, okay, that's gonna be in the payments line. That's gonna be down here. And so I go to my payments line item, W-2. I'm gonna say that was 4,000. I can go back then to page one and that's going to be my calculation that i can kind of double check the thing that i'm not double double checking really is the tax calculation given the progressive tax system and then i could go back on over to my software to page two and say okay there's my payment that i made the four thousand bottom line is the nine oh nine oh two nine oh two and that's going to be the refund that we have there so that looks that looks good let's go back up that's going to be the basic case and let's say okay well now let's say that we make a change here a little a little bit more complex and say that the wages were 150,000, which is over the social security cap which is 142 so now you have a difference between the wages in box one and three which could cause questions from clients they might say well which is my actual wages and obviously the higher wages is more what you actually earned, but there's a difference here because you hit the cap on the social security wages, just to emphasize that difference. So if you were to enter this into the data input, 150,000, first tab, I'd say let's put in 150,000. And so now uh, now we've got, we've got, I'm gonna delete, the, well the, the withholdings on the Fed side was 37.5, which I have to input 37, 37.5 because the system's not going to know that but the social security income notice it capped it at 142.8 because that's the cap so that should mirror what's on the w-2 because you can't go over that amount because that's the cap on the social security the social security wages then calculated automatically because it's a flat tax 142.8 times 0.062 and so there we have that. We've got the 8853. Uh, the Medicare wages is matching the 150,000, which I didn't have to do a data input on because it's pulling that over at the same as the, as the box one. And then the Medicare is gonna be calculated for us again, 150,000 times 0 0.0145. That's gonna be the 2,175, the 2,175 there. So then if I go back on over to the forms, we can say, okay, there's the 150,000 in line one. We've got the 12,550 for the standard deduction, we're just gonna say for this example problem, I can mirror that over here, saying the income line is gonna be 150,000. 
back to the first tab. We're going to say that the standard deduction is $12,550. That gives us our taxable income, $137,450. $137,450 matching what's on the tax form. Page 2, tax calculated. Going to rely on the system assert to do that, $27,009. So we're going to say, all right, $27,009 27, here. And then we know that the other side, the payments, I can also pull from my source documents, 375 375 on the payments line 375 and go back to my first tab over here and say that means that my refund would be at the 10491 in that case so I'm going to say does that match line 2 375 10491 so that's scenario number 2 let's do another one a little bit little bit more complex I'm going to say all right well let, let's look at one uh, for example, where box one is 140,000, box two or box three is 142. So now the Social Security is higher than box one, and then the Medicare is at the 150. How did that happen? Well, now box one is being lowered by the 10,000 down below. So it's going to be a lower amount due to the fact that we have this 10,000. So in essence, we can think of which would be your actual wages in this case. Well, the 150 would be the closest to the actual wages that you earned. The 150 is being reduced for federal income taxes by the 10,000, bringing us down to 140, which is the tax that's being used to calculate, you know, the withholdings that added up to this 35,000. And then the Social Security is capped at the 142,000 still. So now you've got these three different reporting lines, whereas they were all the same on the first W-2 example, and this is just an example of how those, those can basically be different. So if we go back on over, we can say, okay, so now let's go back on over and say, now I'm gonna say that there's a retirement plan. So retirement plan involved here. I gotta check that off because that's also gonna help me off to see you know, if I can qualify for an IRA or something like that. 150,000 here. And, and uh, so the wages in, in box one, are actually going to be 140,000, 140,000. The federal taxes we're going to put in place are 35,000. So we'll say 35,000. And then the Social Security is actually going to be higher now. It's at the 142.8. It couldn't guess it based on basically box one because this box down here threw it off. 142.8. So I'm going to say, okay, 142.8. Social Security then being calculated automatically, 0.062%, 8854. So there's the 8854. And then the Medicare wages are going to be the 150, 150,000. And the calculation 2175 automatically done, which is 0 0.0145, 1.45%. So there's the 2175 uh, there. Then we've got this item down here, which is, is in box 12, which will usually have a little letter next to it, which if you don't know what that is, you can go to the instructions and say, okay, box 12 had a letter next to it, the letter being letter number D, which says here, electronic deferral to active 401k cash or deferral arrangement also includes deferrals to the simple and so on. So then I can say, okay, so let's go ahead and go to box 12 and I'm gonna put the little D there and say that was the 10,000. And so there we have it. So now if I go back on over, I can say, all right, there's the 140 on box one because this is for federal income taxes and the other wages were for social security and Medicare, which we usually put in as data input, but we don't think of them as our primary thing that we're looking into, which is the federal income tax in the form 1040, unless we got to deal with other strange situations like social, like uh, unemployment or self-employment tax. If I was to put this in our worksheet, I'd say, okay, the wages are 140. So I'd go back on over here and say, this is 140. And then the federal income taxes that were taken out are 35,000 this time. So we're going to say, all right, 35,000, 35,000. Back to page one. So now we've got, that's not 140, that's 14. There's a difference. There's a zero missing. Fixed it. 140,000, 12,005 on the standard deduction gives us to the 127,450. I can match that over here. Say, okay, 127,450 looks good. Let's go to page two to see the tax calculation, 24,609. So I'm going to say, all right, 24,609. Let's put that in manually, 24,609. I can then say I put in my payments 
35,000, I'm calculating 10,391 on the refund. I could go back over here and say, okay, 10,391 on uh, the refund. So there we have that. Now you might you might have a situation where you've got multiple W-2s. So let's just do that real quick. And let's say I had job one and then job two, let's say job two, and then we could have a, another another job and let's put the 40,000 in here, 40,000. This will be the first one we looked at, 40,000. And then the withholdings were 4,000. So I'm gonna say 4,000. These calculated automatically should match 2480580. So there's the 2480, the 580. So fairly straightforward. I can jump over to the form. They're both going to be included in line one now. So there's the 180. I can populate that in my, my worksheet by saying, okay, the, this is going to have the 140. And then I had a 40,000. And then on the payments, I'm going to take this for my source document. I had 4,000 on the payments. So I mean, there's 35 and 4,000 for W1 and W22, W two two W two one W two two, and then go back to the first tab and say, okay, there's the 180. I'm still at the standard deduction 12,550. That brings me down to the 167,450. The 167,450 here. Going to page two, calculating the tax at the 34,411. So there's the 34. 411 and then the withholdings were the 39,000 so I'm getting the 4589 4589 on the bottom line and so something went wrong here hold on a second something is horribly horribly wrong the withholdings were 39 the total tax was 34411 34411 and I see what happened here so notice that we have the, this item then resulted. And this is why it's useful to, to use your worksheet, right? Because now I can double say, ah, what, what happened there? Well, now I'm on schedule three. Say, so what happened with that thing? And let's take a look at the second page of schedule three, excess social security tier one. Now, how could that happen? Well, notice that we capped out the social security down here. So we capped out uh, the social security on this W-2 and then, and then up top, we add more social security because we had two employers so that could result in us going over the cap for the social security and kind of running into that problem with which again the software nicely saw that i didn't see that and the software picked it up and i can go in and say oh yeah that you know i could see what happened there so if i was going to put that into my worksheet i might put it into like my payment line over here i might go into my payments on my worksheet for example and say that that we had another item and I might name it something differently, but down here somewhere, but I would include it in there in some place and say, eh, let's make it let's make another line for it just for the fun of it. We're going to say this is going to be then. So I just added a line item and we'll, we'll, we'll keep on adding to this worksheet kind of as we go excess social security. I just put one on the outside. Now we could actually do the calculation. I'm going to add that cell in to it to, to try to recalculate that added social security if we wanted to add more detail in our Excel worksheet uh, as well. I'm just gonna basically rely on the software at this point in time to kind of point that out. So now we're at the 41,480. If I go back to the first tab, that's gonna be included in this line item. So now we're at the 7,069. Going back on over to page two of the 1040, page two of the 1040, 7,069. Now the the next scenario you could have, let's say that these two uh, these two were from a married couple now that had two two uh, paid paychecks. So I'm going to go back on over. Let's go to the first tab here, and let's say they were married filing jointly. So now you got Adam said to Eve, "Hey, madam, I'm Adam," and then they got married. So then you got that, and then let's say that if we go to the income line item that we apply the second one, you want to assign it to a spouse. So, so, and the tax software may not be as politically correct in the cert because the spouse would be the second one that was reported on the, you know, so you got some kind of, but in any case, that's gonna, but you know, this, you gotta assign which spouse it's going to because then you could have some differences in terms of, for example, the caps with regards to the social security here, as well as retirement plan types of things and whatnot which that might be relevant uh, to put in place. So if I go then back to the forms, 
now I've got the 180. So if I was to go back into my, my check schedule over here, I'd say, okay, so now I've got the 180 for my two uh, workers, which I might want to indicate if they're going to be, you know, which spouse the workers were in in that event, but the 180 would be the same. And so that is going to tout to the 180. And then we've got the 25-1 over here. So if I go back to my form and say the 25-1, because they're married filing joint standard deduction has been changed to 25-1. That brings us to the 154-9 for the taxable income. So we've got the 154-9 checks out page two tax calculation 25575 25575 we'll put here 25575 that we have there and then i'm going to go back on over and say there there is that and then the bottom line is going to be the 13425 if i go back here say 13425 that's because if i go back to my payments now this doesn't apply because now you got two W-2s, the cap only applies to each of the spouses. So now because these were earned by two separate people, the, even though they're filing the same return, you don't have that same cap. And there's the 13425. So that's why that even though they're one entity for taxes, the allocation of the spouses here uh, could be important for a few different reasons. So you want to you know, keep that in mind as you do the data input. And there's the 13425 and the 13425. So those are just some examples. So remember, when it gets more complicated, you might want to look at the instructions on the W-2 and just look at the box line by line instructions and then look at the instructions, for example, box 12, which could be quite, you know, there's a lot of letters that can go into those box 12. That's where a lot of the unusual stuff can happen. And it's useful to be able to explain that stuff so that your your client doesn't think of you as just like a, a machine that's just inputting data that doesn't understand what's going on because you won't be able to do any planning or tell them if there's any problem or anything that way. And so part of what you want to do is be able to, you know, look this stuff up and explain it to a client.